to Final Resonance TV at episode number seven of Musical Journeys. Today, my guest is the wonderful, <laughs> awesome John Bollinger, all the way from Nashville, uh, Tennessee today. Jeff, thanks for having it's me, man. Everybody. Yeah, good yeah, to see you. We have this crazy story out in that. He, just, right. uh, he is the rig rundown guy for the people that don't know for Premier Guitar Magazine. That's right. So one day he walked into a club where I was playing and he was checking out my rig. Yeah. And I looked down and I see the rig rundown guy. I was like, oh my God, really? So yeah. he got up and jammed with us and yeah. that's how he got it. Friends ever since. Yeah, <laughs> so John, he, he, you know, besides being the rig rundown guy for Premier Guitar, He's also Lee Bryce's pedal steel. Yeah, player. yeah, I play utility for Lee, so mostly pedal steel, about 90% of the time. Mandolin, uh, uh, harmonica, um, guitar, you know, um, but primarily, primarily uh, pedal steel. Okay, yeah. and your CMT uh, band leader yeah, for years. Yeah, for the last nine years, I've been the uh, music director on, on CMT, so every year there are usually six new artists that. Um, have had you know a hit or two, but they don't warrant getting a full song. You know, so what we do is we find six new artists that are doing well, and we'll do a um, I'll do a quick arrangement where it's a bit of a vamp in a chorus and then a vamp to break. Right. So it's just kind of a a, a quick exposure for me. I've seen those little, little yeah, you know, like a lead in so, and then right, right. So like like um, like uh, Thomas Rhett. Uh, did it one year and the next year he's headlining. Right. Uh, Kelsey Ballerini did it uh, one year and then the, and then a few months later I worked with her on the CMT Shania Tain, Twain tribute where she was then. So it's just it's 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 really fun because it's fun to see every year you know six artists that are just kind of starting to happen and that's actually where I met Lee. Okay. Believe it or not, he really? was one of those, one of those new artists, artists yeah. like six years ago. Yeah. yeah. And even then, I remember you know you kind of. It registers, you know. You right. you got six artists and think, okay, that dude has got it. That right. that's totally it. I thought, man, that guy sings. Right, right. And then um, you know, ended up now I've been working for four, almost four years. So. Right, with with Lee. Yeah. So the Nashville Star. Yeah, the Nashville Star. Yeah, I did that for all six seasons. For uh, I was the right. I was the band leader on that, and that was you know the initial season. It was um, Miranda Lambert, which was just. Right. I watched yeah. all those. Yeah, that's just, just, just well. In yeah. fact, your friend Angela. Yeah, she was on it. Yeah, yeah. 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 She's well, in, what a great talent yeah. she yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. In fact, she you didn't have to sit on Angela. Huh? Uh, you, you, yeah, I did. I do yeah. it on Angela. Yeah. yeah. Two thousand seven, she was on that show. Yeah. 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 She was the winner. Yeah. Yeah. And she's she's an amazing talent. So that that was great. That and was you a, did the tours with them. Yes. That happened after. Yeah, it was a fun gig because we would we would. Um, we would do the the first, you know, the first season just did the show, right? And then after that, we uh, toured with the first first year. The winner was a guy named Buddy Jewell who did a deal on Sony, yeah. and I toured with him. And then went back to the show to do some auditions, and then found next year's you know candidates, and then right. did the show. Actually, Casey Musgraves was on there as well, yeah, and Chris was, Young. Yeah, Casey yeah. was on the same year as Angela. Yeah, yeah, yeah. same year as Angela. Yeah, that's a good, that's a heavy talent year. Yeah. But it was great. We would do that. We'd do the show. Then we would do a, a tour with like the top four. Right. And then audition people for the next year, and then so that's uh, a cycle around. For yeah, cycle around. So it was a, that was a that was a fun six that's years. A good gig for you. Yeah, yeah, good times. So. Your column, your last call call. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, we kind of talked about this, but you're yeah. an English major. Yeah, yeah. I got. I uh, wouldn't were, recommend it. And he was a teacher, <laughs> yeah. which I had no clue. Wouldn't recommend that either. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah. Not what I not what I thought about when I was looking at Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. Mostly right, I guess. Wikipedia, you're doing a pretty good job. I think mostly right. Mostly right. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I did. Uh, um, got that degree in English and. You know, when you're a kid, you make decisions based on whatever. Right. So, uh, so I like to read books. So I figured, okay. But you're so, from Montana. Yeah, from Montana. Yeah. So you yeah. started out. Let's. I want to kind of go back to your beginning. Okay. Let's yeah. Yeah. Go back to when you were a kid. Yeah. Born and raised in Montana. Um, how did you get into music? 
Well, uh, I think my mother had like a crush on this guy playing guitar in church. I really think that was it. <laughs> there was a cute kind of hippie guy. This is you know, in the 70s and you had like guitars in church, you know. <laughs> and I think she, she thought, John, you should do that. Okay. And my, my grandmother um, actually was a professional musician. She was a, a trumpet player, um, toured, uh, toured internationally in this in this. Band, it was an all women's band. Okay. Kind of like if you've seen that Tony Curtis, Jack Lemon, Marilyn Monroe movie, Some Like It Hot, right. about an all women's band. Okay. I don't know if you've seen it. Fabulous movie. <laughs> but she was that. She was, uh, she was, and she was, when I knew her, she was just an old lady. She was a grandma. <laughs> but but she, was a, she was a grandma that always had like a, a cigarette in her hand and a drink in the other hand. But she was always you know, like, hey, get out and do things. Don't stay home. Okay. Do so stuff. So, yeah, and she had all these great records, you know, and when she died, I inherited her, uh, her stereo, <laughs> which I later turned into a guitar amplifier. Okay. But uh, yeah, right. I inherited her stereo and a bunch of records. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's a genetic thing or what's your... I don't know if it's nature or nurture, but right, yeah, right. I got the bug. Some of both, maybe? Yeah, some of yeah. both. And my mom, she... Uh, Hooked me up with guitar lessons, and you know, and then when I got an electric guitar, as you yeah. remember yourself, right, sure, that's when sure. it takes off. You're like, it's yeah. like having a rocket. So what happened? What was the rocket? Oh uh, well, my first, I, I really wanted uh, an electric guitar, and my parents, God bless them, uh, they bought me this thing, and it was a, um, it's called a Memphis, and it was just you know some cheap foreign crap, you know, plywood, <laughs> whatever. Right, right. But you know that and a little crappy solid state amp and uh, man I thought it was the coolest thing ever I had no idea how horrible that guitar was <laughs> <laughs> they have high action yeah, oh <laughs> right are they all the good the whole tell you what though it makes you a better player it does, it does, if man. you could eke a sound out of something that's terrible right then you know <laughs> it helps right yeah it does <laughs> it does it does so you get this guitar you're how old uh, I was when I really got the bug, it was uh, eighth grade, whatever, however old you are in yeah. eighth grade. I don't right. know. Like, uh, but that's when it just, you know, like I'm sure with you, same thing. You just, when it finally registers, right. you're like. Was there something that, an artist that inspires you or just. Oh, man, I think it was just. Or just that being around Initial it. joy. Yeah. You feel when you're, when you start playing with somebody else. Right. And you first try doing a little solo, and it kind of sounds like music. And they're like, "Well, geez, I guess I'm. <laughs> am I expressing myself?" <laughs> it's cool, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, it just like, makes you smile. And yeah, it, yeah. And you know, I think it. I think it works on a. I know music's important to us for a lot of different reasons, you know. And developmentally, I think as a sure. as humans, we 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 are drawn to it because. Recognizing patterns is how our oh, yeah. brains the grew. From, yeah, side of it. Yeah, yeah. And, and I look at my little my little daughter Betty. You just saw it here. Right. You can just you know I play for her all the time, and you can just see it. You can just see this stuff register, and she begins you know kicking her little hands and right. feet, and uh, you know when you're a kid and you you start first making that man, it's just powerful. And right. you know I imagine it's uh, I imagine it's like that first hit of heroin. You just, <laughs> you think, wow, I'd like to do that again. <laughs> yeah. I imagine. It's like I that. imagine. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's just, you know how it is, man. You just feel that buzz and you, you're you kind of chasing the dragon from there on right, out. Right, right. You know? So were there artists at that period that, who, who influenced you when you were younger? Well, um, my dad bought me a Dire Straits record, okay. uh, which I thought was very, looking back, how cool was that? Uh, right, right. You know, because there was... So we got a lot of finger... I think so. Yeah, I think so. I think that was Mark. Alford, that was probably yeah. Mark Nolfer. Yeah. He bought me that record and I'm like, man, that... Uh, right. And, and I didn't, I don't know why he chose that, uh, but he did, and uh, and you know I love that. I was really influenced by that. Um, I had a guitar teacher when I was a kid, Mike Hoover, who turned me on to Eric Clapton, and so I was really into Eric Clapton. Clapton. Mm -hmm. um, but it was a, it was Clapton after Cream. Like I didn't really know about Cream because I knew like backless right. and right. and stuff like that. 
right. when you'd switch to a strap. And maybe, and actually, this is one of those things where you start talking about yourself, you start figuring things out. Right, as you go. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I've never been a super overdrive guy, and maybe it's because my dad gave me that dire straight thing, right. and my guitar pleasure, my, my guitar teacher was into Clapton right. when he switched to strats and wasn't really right. overdrive, like right. Lay Down Sally. Right, right. <laughs> you know, like right. That, that era. Right, and I hear that in your playing. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah it's, it's all, you know, you can't, you can't run from your influences. They're all there, even if you've forgotten them. Right. It's like it becomes yeah. part of you, you know? That's, that's crazy. Yeah. So you go uh, get this guitar, you start bands, any bands? Yeah. Oh, or? yeah, yeah. Just uh, had a teenage band. You bet. There's a buddy of mine named Bob Whitmer who owns uh, Hanson Music. Shout out to you guys in Billings, Montana. But, you know, we band playing together and. and uh, and that was it. Just just loved it. And then later, my guitar teacher, a guy named Mike Hoover, he started hiring me for his band. So I started playing clubs. And that's when you really, right. as you know, that's when you really learn. Right, right, you know? right. Working. Yeah, it's the earn while you learn program. Right, right. Yeah. That's awesome. That's the you know, yeah. best part, right? Yeah. When you look back, yeah. when you oh. look back at it. Man, and, you know, I, I know I'll go full circle. I know eventually... When uh, I mean, there's an expiration date on everybody's career, <laughs> so <laughs> I know when I'm when they when Nashville says, "Okay, old man, beat it, <laughs> yeah. all right, old Get man." Out of here. You know that's a good thing about being a steel player. You got a longer I life. Say, yeah, yeah. You want the old guy back on steel. Yeah. So the steel thing, how did that evolve? Uh, well, I I always loved it. I loved. Uh, there's a band called the New Riders of the Purple Sage uh, that had a originally. But uh, Jerry uh, Garcia was a steel player okay. in that. Okay. Um, and then he was too busy with the dead and couldn't do it anymore. So I got the hired any Buddy Cage, and I can't play anything like Buddy Cage, but he's just a brilliant player. Right. And then you know working in in Nashville, particularly you know Nashville Star and things like that, I was working around steel players because you back then you had to have a steel player. You know, it was right. a different world. Right. It was part of the thing. Um, and uh, and they're now, you know, music has changed so radically. I don't know what country music, whatever the categorizing country music is, right, like, right. it doesn't have a lot to do with right. what it was 20 years ago. Right. But, you know, we're trying to make enough steel players, and I just loved it. And I played bottleneck, you know, forever. So, uh, so yeah, I, I just... You eventually got yeah, I just on figured, steel and... Yeah. You were originally on guitar. Yeah, yeah. And then you went to steel. Yeah, I went to steel. And you picked up Manda, mandolin. Well, in mandolin, I played that. I've played that since, uh, you know, since I was about oh gosh, I don't know, maybe about in my early twenties. I okay, so got a mandolin. Yeah. So coming from uh, Montana to Nashville, yeah. How do you how do you get there? Well, I loaded up my seventy seven micro bus. Uh, <laughs> for I, real. Yeah, for real. <laughs> I did. Because uh, I've seen you say that before yeah, like, yeah. in your articles. And I was like, is he just yeah. saying that? No, I uh, really did. Okay. I had a green, you know, chartreuse green <laughs> micro bus. And my son, August, who was four years old at the time, right. and uh, my then wife, Sherry, loaded up uh, this bus with everything we had. I had a terrible Telecaster, just a dog, and a PV212 solid state amp, no pedals. <laughs> A tuner, uh, a bass, a mandolin, and an acoustic. And uh, did you have any prospects before you left? No, <laughs> you just came. Nothing. Didn't have any. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, didn't have any. Leave of faith. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got a job uh, waiting tables and did that for a while. And then I, then I got a writing deal with a with a company, and uh, and then I ended up. And I, and I I booked little gigs along the way. Right, um, you're in town. Yeah, and then end up. I really came down primarily. I I wanted to write songs more than anything, um, because a, a guy uh, I knew a little bit from Montana, a guy named Costas, had had huge success, and uh, I thought, you know, I was I was making you know, maybe eleven thousand a year, and uh, mm. he'd gone from making eleven thousand a year to like. A million dollars a year. Right, thought, right. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Land of opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was it. That so was let's it. Let's go. Yeah. So uh, that was it, and I, I end up, um, you know, I heard about some auditions and uh, began touring with a artist on Sony named James House, and toured then That was great. You know, go first tour, learned a lot. James is a really talented guy. Learned a lot from him, and 
learned about just the whole, you know how it is, you just kind of, you, you fake it and then you watch people and you kind of Figure eventually, yeah. you're fooling people into it. <laughs> <laughs> you're faking it, but you're actually fooling people, so you're just faking it. Well, and you're so, fooling your way all the way on the TV. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Totally, totally, <laughs> totally. Yeah. So, totally, yeah. So you did. I guess you, you went through just different stages of different artists through that yeah. whole period. Yeah. And how do you get to CMT into this? Well, um, when I um, and I know you had, written, had you had songs that you had written that were that were cuts. Yeah, yeah. I got. Um, yeah, I had, I've had I've had some cuts. I've had I've never had any hits, but I've had some cool people record my songs. You know. Uh, um, uh, Joe Walsh uh, recorded a song of mine, which is you yeah, know cool. to this, uh, I, and I got to cut it with him. And the idea of like being in the studio that dude and hearing him do it, I thought, yeah. <laughs> and and then, and I've had some other cool cool things. Chrissy Hine cut a song, and, and awesome. uh, uh, Ray Scott, guy I love. Uh, he's he cut a song of mine, and something we wrote together. And and I've had I've had and and there are others too, but you know, no hits, but it's always a thrill and. It's a big thrill. My on um, Lee Bryce's new record, we've we've got a got yeah. A song, I think so. I saw that. Interview. Yeah. You were talking about you know, y'all were together on his bread rundown. Right? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And it's kind of cool too. We uh, when we recorded it, um, you know, I took a stab at the solo, and it was it was okay. And Travis, the main guitar player right. in the band, he took a stab at it, and they, Travis played a great solo, but it wasn't quite right. But then he brought in uh, Lee's friends with Warren Haynes, and Warren came in and played it, and it was. Perfect. It was because it's this kind of funky, bluesy thing that I right. mean, right. that is just Warren's deal, man. And <laughs> and it really brought it up to the next level. So that 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 was really a thrill. That's cool. So Lee Bryce in the TV thing. You get to the TV thing. Oh, and you did. yeah. Well, the T the TV thing. Um, this really was a fake it till you make it thing. Back back in. The day when I first started working in Nashville, um, there was uh, Nashville Now and the yeah, TNN. Sure, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there was, and the Opry was televised, and you would, you if you were working with a with a recording artist, you'd end up playing quite a bit of TV. You really would, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. um, because they they had to fill that roster every every night. You know, I think it was five nights a week. So you'd end up doing a lot of TV so I kind of figured it out there and then when I heard that Nashville Star was was uh, was happening I found out who the producer was and I put together and it's it was totally kind of a bluff I just put together a bunch of these TV things I'd done as just a side person right right and put them together and it actually kind of looked sort of impressive it wasn't but it kind of looked impressive, right. impressive. and I said and I told the guy I said look Whenever they do Nashville, whenever they do bands in Nashville, they hire great players, but they're old guys. They're sitting down and they're boring. And it's and I said, I'll get you a rocking great band that plays great and looks great, and they're into it. Hmm. And so the producer, a guy named John Small, he said, Okay, well we'll hire you, put together this band, and we'll hire you for the audition process. Um, so I did. I got together. These friends of mine, um, I was playing with, and we, we, I charted out like a hundred songs because it's literally like a human karaoke thing where we went to this. Uh, people were auditioning, and they'd have to come in and and uh, they would have a, a cover off this list of about a hundred songs. So I right, meet with them. Right. I found out what key. Just I meet with them alone with the guitar. Found out what key, what kind of flavor they'd want on it. I'd then take my notes, and then I'd go to the band, I'd explain it all to them, and then we'd go live, and go live to tape with all these acts, and, I mean, after that, he's like, okay, man, if you can do that, <laughs> yeah, if, if you, you got the job. Yeah, you do that. Well, that's good, though. He, he yeah. gave you a shot. Like, he did. He gave me a shot, and, and I worked really hard, and, and the guys in the band worked really hard, and we did it, and... Uh, and so, so yeah. you revolutionized the whole. Well, well, you know, it's funny too. Background, man. Because um, American Idol did not have a band at that point, right. and then they saw us having a band. I'm not going to say they they did it because of us, but they probably did it because of us. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, yeah, and then actually, um, when the Voice came around, um, it was uh, uh, one of our producers from from the CMT Awards uh, became the producer of that okay. show when he left, and and so Nashville. Nashville really does. I mean, this is it is 
a music town. It is a, you know, no bullshit, you know, absolute deep end of the talent pool, a lot of really hardworking, talented musicians here. Sure. And when it comes to just like, uh, just put five, five strangers in a room Give them a sheet of paper and go for it. <laughs> go, for <laughs> go for it. it. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, they can. They can. I they can do it. it. And it's and it's it's a skill like being a carpenter right. or like right. like being a chef or whatever. It's you get your basic tools, you you get your skill set together, and you hone your craft and you do it. So so yeah. Once once uh, uh, after the Nashville Star thing, then I there's there's a. It's kind of a specialized skill set, right? So I ended up getting, you know, uh, um, doing things for CMT and for PBS and for GAC and 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 other networks too, kind of based on that. Okay. Um, so that kind of that was a starting point for you to go on. Yeah. Once you've established that you can, yeah, that you can you can do that. Back up people on TV, right. then right. then then I've gotten more, you know, more calls out of that. That's awesome. Thankfully, yeah. yeah. So there's always a couple shows, couple shows a year that come up like that. Yeah. 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 Well, the uh, Lee Bryce, now you get to Lee. How do you get to Lee? Uh, well, well, I, I met Lee originally on that show. Right, when you backed and, him up. Uh, and then I, uh, I had quit a gig um, and was just... I just took the premier guitar gig and quit my, my okay. other gig. That was four years ago now. Yeah, yeah, right. about, about four years ago. Right. Quit that, uh, started that premier guitar and quit my other gig and was just playing clubs. And uh, my buddy Wayne Polly, who is, he was front of house on the National Star Tour, mm-hmm. who Angela knows. Um, yeah, yeah. And he was working with Lee, and Lee had just had Song of the Year with that song, I Drive Your Truck. Right. And a very steel heavy song. And right, he was right. like, "Okay, I'm, I got to get a steel player." Right. And uh, Lee uh, uh, Wayne said, "Well, I think I got the guy." So they they um, called me up, and said, "Kid, okay, you want to do it?" I said, "Yeah, sure, man." So they sent me the songs. They said, "Okay, meet us in Arizona." So I flew out there with my gear, and I played a I guess it was a theater that night. And the next night we played the Tonight Show. Um, so that's a, that's, that's a, so the second night, yeah, second night yeah. you ever played the song. Yeah. So yeah, second night I'd ever, <laughs> I just the, met these guys. You're on the tonight show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, first night it was a full concert. It was a, it was like a 90 minute show, right. headlining show. Right. I bought the no, no rehearsal. Right. Just show up. Just show up. So I did my homework, show up, played, uh, did the show. <laughs> next night did, did the tonight show. And then after the tonight show played the house of blues on sunset, uh, oh, wow. which is great, which is now gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They got rid of it. Yeah, which is a tragedy. It is a tragedy. Yeah, it's a pretty, it was a pretty voice. It, it was it was kind of the same thing. I think Lee figured, okay, well, this dude can do that. Right, he's all right. You know, he's in, right? Baptism by fire. Either <laughs> that's either. the way I usually do. It. Yeah, yeah. You, all these people in town are like, "What? No practice?" I'm like, no, no. Just I'll see you at the show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Pra- you practice for your whole life right. for this. <laughs> right. Yeah. Come on, let's yeah. do this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's exactly. Crazy. That's there. crazy. So the Premier Guitar Magazine. Gig? How did you get that? Well, um, I I approached them. Um, gosh, maybe almost like ten years ago. I uh, uh, I wanted. To, I used to read Tommy Tedesco's back page on. Yeah, Twitter. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, Tommy Tedesco, as you know, is a CD studio musician who's really, really. Didn't he write the thing for Mash? Oh, he definitely played, on, yeah, it. Definitely played, played it. on it. I think he did play on it because yeah. it's a gut string thing, right, 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 his, right. his deal. His thing, yeah. But um, he wrote this thing for, for for a guitar player that was funny and and right, uh, and I right. thought, man, I, I remember that. I want to do that, and so I I wrote a couple columns and I sent them out to a bunch of different magazines, and um, you know, I literally this is. Pretty, this is really a pre-internet. I mean, there was internet, but I wasn't online. Right, right. Um, so I, uh, I went to Davis Kid Bookstore and saw what magazines, what music guitar magazines were. And I mm-hmm. wrote down their addresses. I didn't even buy the magazines because I couldn't afford it. And uh, <laughs> right, right. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Set them, <laughs> set them some stuff. Sat down and read. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And wrote it down. Right, stuff. right. Yeah. <laughs> now, exactly. you, now you just take a picture. Of yeah, it. yeah, right. yeah. That's that's literally what I did. And right. uh, and. Uh, and uh, Premier Guitar said, "Yeah, hey, we'll we'll uh, we'll uh, yeah write a 
column for us. So I, I wrote a column for him, and I did that for years. And uh, and I would do you know the odd review, written review every now and then, or like an odd feature thing every now and then. Right, right. And then uh, uh, Sean, our editor in chief, uh, called me up one day. Um, I said, "Hey, do you want to be our just full time video dude?" And at the time, you know, I read the magazine, but I'm, I'm not really an online guy, so I didn't even know what these I didn't even read rundowns were. <laughs> right. Review dogs. <laughs> Uh, but he told me about it and said, uh, yeah, sure. And I wanted to, wanted to change, um, cause it's kind of like, it's almost like crop rotation for your brain. If you only do one thing, right, right. then you only do one thing. Right, so, right, right. It does. It helps you, yeah. it helps you, you know, expand. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, I mean like, well, like this gig for you. Well, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a new gig for me. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's cool. Like, yeah. I mean, I really yeah. enjoy it. It's something new to, to, you know offset what I do during the other right day. it's it's right. in the field it's it's right. it's it's about music it's not music but it's about music and just all kind of kind of I don't know makes us kind of click a little bit I guess so when Sean uh, offered me the gig I said sure and I didn't really know what to expect but I've really enjoyed it. It's been it's been great. I mean, yeah, well, people people love it. Yeah, I mean, it's, well, sometimes I love it. Sometimes I hate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, you know, that's, that's the internet. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of them love to hate. That's, yeah. that's, yeah. Yeah. that's the, the new gig I got. Right, yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> I'm gonna start getting to yeah. hate. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. got a few already. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You'll, yeah. you'll get. That's when you really know right. you really know you're succeeding. You got a lot of hate. Right. Somebody. Yeah. That's how you say if somebody doesn't hate you, not doing anything right. Yeah. Right. So I have my five. Well, actually, six last questions okay, perfect. today. All right. I switch them up a little bit. Okay. I try not to do them the same every time. So the first thing that I ask you to do is describe your feelings about music in one word. Connectivity. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, I might have to explain a little Go bit. Go ahead. But um, here's the way I see it. When you and this sounds like some hippie nonsense, but, <laughs> but but when you break everything down to its simplest level on a molecular level, we're, everything is connected, but nothing is touching. We're all just these little little vibrating molecules, you know, tiny little things. And Tesla said, if you want to understand the world, understand vibration. And there is something about it. like when we're kids and we hit those strings, we just kind of right. feel that vibration. There is something that kind of connects you to, you feel connected to music when it's done right. When you hear it, you feel connected to everything, to, to God, to, to humanity, to life, to whatever. Right, right. You know, so... Yeah, that was that's a good question. There is something about that, you know, when you stand in front of a stack and you, you're right. The pressure wave comes through you. And yeah, it's, it's, I told my wife. I said, uh, whenever I do that, I just come out of there smiling. Yeah, <laughs> what it is? Oh it man, it away. absolutely, it's, it's great. It just feels so good. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's it's that is what it is for me. It's a, it's the, I feel kind of connected. Otherwise, I mean, if, if I'm not playing music, I don't know who the hell I am. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you know you're doing the right thing. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the state of the music business. Uh, you know, I'm optimistic about it. I really am. Everybody you know? seems to be pretty optimistic. About yeah. It. Um, I know. Except I, for a few people. But. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I know. I mean, you hear people complaining about whatever, and there's always been people complaining about whatever. But the truth is, um, there are. Okay. Look at look at Instagram. You've got if you're a kid in in Guam that can borrow a phone and a guitar and you have some ability, you can share that with the world. You know? Right, right. So you can you can let everybody hear what you're doing. And people are just and it, it all kind of feeds each other. Like I'll I'll see such amazing music by all these different people from all over the place. Sure, and sure. it's it's beautiful, man. There are so many... Because the great thing about the online thing is there's no longer the gatekeepers. There's always been gatekeepers. Sure, there's always been sure. a record label or, or a radio station or a promoter or, you know, somebody booking a club. Somebody says, you know, this is what you people get to listen to. Right, right. But now, 
anybody can put something on on YouTube or Facebook or right, or right. Instagram and just put it out there. Right, and right. you know this this guy and, and I, my my new last call album. I just wrote about this uh, uh, kind of how I'm getting more music from Instagram now than anything else because there's no fixing it. I mean, I'm sure there's some people that do, you know, edits, edits, but for most of us, we just turn pick up on, a guitar, turn it on, and let it rip. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, like when you make your videos, yeah, when I make mine, yeah, that's what we do. Right. Yeah, let's let it rip. Yeah, put on some pants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> Shield. Yeah, like, yeah. Set it up right. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm optimistic about music <laughs> because it, it's. It's open to anybody. It's a it's right. a free concert, you know. Right, uh, all over the world. Yeah. So advice to young aspiring musicians, oh, songwriters. Yeah. Oh, follow your bliss. <laughs> <laughs> that's my that's my advice. Do what makes you happy. It's about being happy, man. Find what makes you happy and do it. And if music makes you happy, find a way to do it. You know, if that's if that's your right. bliss, find a way to do it. Getting your bus and get yeah <laughs> come from Montana yeah yeah Nashville. yeah exactly and you know if I didn't do that I you know I could have just stuck around Montana and played clubs and that'd be a very gratifying life too you know a lot of my right, friends right. do that and right. they, they're great and I might end up back there when I'm you know when Nashville's finally done man I sure. just go back and sure. play clubs there until I'm you know until I keel over dead at a gig <laughs> That's yeah. That's my plan. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> I'm there with you. Yeah, let's so, keel over roughly the same time. That happened recently. Yeah, yeah. That's somebody. It happened to somebody at a gig, and I thought, well, you know, that's, that's you know, let's go. Right. That's where I want to go, man. Yeah. Four albums that changed your life. Uh, well, okay, the Dire Straits first record. Okay. Uh, that. Um, probably Backless by Eric Clapton. Um, uh, Gosh, um, let me think. Um, Steve Earle's uh, Exit O, mm-hmm. just, God, I love that. And man, the last one, that's really hard. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Just pick one. Uh, well, okay, I'll pick this. If Lee's next record is a hit, that will change my life. <laughs> that, if, if my song That'll is a hit, a- that will change my life because it will make me rich. That's right. That's, right. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. One more thing. Yeah. Your creative process. When you are writing songs, uh-huh. you know, there's a lot of. This is a, I have this book. It's called Musicians in Tune. It's old, uh-huh. 20 years old. And it talks about all these different people Clapton, yeah. Harrison, all their processes. They were interviewed for this book. What is your process? What I mean, do you get in a room by yourself and just noodle or. Oh, well, I mean. Or how do you do I, I had I had writing deals for, you know, for seven years. I wrote for different publishers and where you'd have to do that. You'd have to you go, go in a room with people. Go in a room, meet. And, and that is just. I don't know. I, I never really. I never really had a lot of success with that. And, uh, I don't know if I ever really got anything good because it seemed like we were just kind of, kind of putting together clever things that we'd probably heard somewhere else. Right, and, right. You know, whatever. Right. We were chasing trends, I think. Right, right. Um, so, uh, any more? I don't know. I don't know what my creative process is. Like, like a lot of it when you when you're when you're doing it professionally, you don't really have the luxury of even having a process. You just Right. It's just like, damn it, do it. I've got to do this. Right, yeah, right, right. this has got whether it's whether it's like a session or a gig or I'm writing a column, or writing a song. It's just like, okay, <laughs> all right, John, you son of a bitch, you're gonna do this. You were gonna make this thing. Happen. Now, when you're on stage now, because I yeah. saw you do this. Yeah, you sat in with us. Yeah, you know when you're improv, doing improv, it's just. You know, you just do it. Oh yeah, just, just all, oh just all, wherever it's it goes. All, you know, yeah, and just go for it. Yeah, who cares? That's just about fun. Yeah, then that's create yeah. creativity on the fly. Yeah, that that's just fun. Yeah, you know? it's just letting it go and letting yeah. yourself relax. See where it where it, it takes, takes you. Yeah. Well, cool, man. I appreciate you hanging out. Man, with you me, John. Yeah, definitely. So glad to come up and see you, man. Yeah, yeah, my and pleasure. That is uh, episode number seven of Musical Journeys. This is John Bollinger. Y'all check him out on Premier Guitar Magazine. Yes, please do. Tune in. Review demos. Rig rundowns. I got a lesson series called What Bollinger Plays. Check out our Instagram. All that jazz. Thanks, John. There's my plug. All right. <laughs> <laughs>